Timing is one of the most important aspects of your bowling game, and one of the factors that affects your timing the most is your footwork. Today, let's go over some of the things to work towards in order to achieve the best footwork possible. When it comes to footwork, there are generally two types of commonly used approaches, the four-step approach and the five-step approach. Today we're going to discuss the five-step approach primarily because the four-step approach mirrors the five-step approach after the first step. The number of steps you take in your approach largely comes down to personal preference and your ability. If you want more guidance on whether you should utilize a four-step or a five-step approach, try to find a local coach near you who can help to pick the best uh, style of approach for, to fit your game. As a final disclaimer before we get started, the steps we're going to go through here are going to be focusing on a traditional one-handed approach. If you want me to make another video on the two-handed approach, please let me know in the comments down below. The first step of the five-step approach is primarily used for timing. This step is usually the smallest step and is a straight step directly towards the foul line. This particular step is done with your slide foot. That means if you're a right-handed bowler, your first step will be with your left foot. If you are a left-handed bowler, your right foot will be making the first step. At this point, the ball remains stationary as your foot hits the ground. The second step, and the first step for the four-step approach, will take your opposite non-slide foot and place it either directly in front of your slide foot. This step is called the crossover step. This crossover step is crucial in allowing a slot for the bowling ball to fall into during your backswing and clear your hips out of the way so that you don't have to go around your body with your swing. This will greatly improve your overall accuracy. At the same time, as your foot is coming forward, you will want to begin to move your bowling ball. You'll want to start your push away. By the time you complete this second step, the ball should just begin falling into the backswing. The third step gives your backswing time to get into the proper position, as well as preparing for your fourth step. This step will get you back to walking somewhat normally again, as this step isn't a crossover step. By the time your foot hits the ground, you want your arm to essentially be parallel with the rest of your body. As we complete the third step and start to head into the fourth step, we will want the ball just slightly behind us. The fourth step is a majorly important step. This is what we call the power step. From this step, you'll generate power and ball speed. This step can sometimes be a little on the shorter side, and this is where you want to think of it as a plant and push style of step. This step will still be in line with where you ended up after your crossover step, but in order to generate more power, your foot is going to be slightly more angled towards the outside of the lane. This will give you better leverage as you push off the ball of your foot and give you a powerful slide. By the time your foot is flat on the ground in this step, you should be at the apex of your backswing and the ball should begin to come down as you go to enter the slide. The fifth step is the grand finale. This is the slide step where we actually release the ball. The goal is to have the ball come off your hand as you complete the slide. This makes for the best po timing possible, creates the most power possible, and helps with consistency and accuracy. An important thing to note is where your non-slide leg ends up at this point. After the power step, your, your non-slide leg needs to extend outwards behind you towards your non-bowling side hand for balance and to continue to clear the way for the bowling ball to drop into the proper slot out of the backswing. Now, two final notes before wrapping up. Not everyone's timing is going to fall into the perfect timing category. Quite often, you'll see that lower rev, lower speed bowlers have success with what we would call early timing. Or in my own case, you'll see a power player with what we would consider late timing. It's all relative to your own style, and it's important that you discuss these things with your local coach we talked about earlier. The second note is that in general, with a standard one-handed approach, your steps will start smaller and get larger and larger towards the end of the approach. However, depending on your style, that may not always be the case. As I previously mentioned, work with your local coach on your game to figure out what works best and feels best for your style. 
Hopefully this helped you if you are a newer bowler to understand the steps that we take on the approach and what the goal is for each step. Again, to recap, the first step is a timing step. The second step is your crossover step. The third step prepares you for your backswing. The fourth step generates power. And the fifth step is the slide where it all comes together. If you learned anything in this video or have any questions or suggestions for future content, let me know down in the comments below. Please also remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for future videos and keep on striking.